Welcome. In this video, you will learn the basics of running a material takeoff, specifically over a framing takeoff. This is meant to provide a guide in using assembly measurements to calculate materials, as well as reporting on your material takeoffs. I'm going to go ahead and run four examples in this video. Those examples include exterior walls, interior walls, headers for some of our openings, as well as our subfloor. Let's go ahead and get started. To begin this process, you will need to have created a project, uploaded your plans, and scaled your plans. I have these items already completed. Next, we need to be using assembly calculations, or assemblies. Assemblies are here within this templates library. Inside of the templates library, we're going to go ahead and start off with our first example, which is for our exterior framed walls. All of the material takeoffs will be stored inside of what is called the Square Takeoff Starter Package. The Square Takeoff Starter Package is a template that stores all of the pre-built assemblies provided to you when you first sign up for Square. I'm going to go ahead and open up that Square Takeoff Starter Package. And today we're going to be focusing a lot of time inside of the Framing Starter Package. But if you need to run a material takeoff or any other aspect of your projects, simply go to the folder that makes sense for you and most of these are broken down into divisions and simply just define the division that you would like to run, the type of material, the specifications of that material and run your takeoff. Now in this case I'm going to access the framing starter package and we will do the exterior walls first. So I'll simply access the exterior wall framing folder. This plan calls for 2x6 exterior walls so I will select the 2x6 exterior wall assemblies. And finally, I will select the height of those walls. This plan calls for 10 foot walls, but notice we have options from eight feet all the way up to 16 feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the 10 foot two by six exterior wall with treated plate. Once I select play on this, I can change any of the relevant information on the assembly. I don't recommend you change much in here, maybe besides the color. Most of this is defaulted this way on purpose. Next is simply select start. Remember that assemblies are comprised of these things called parts and parts are responsible for making the material calculations and ultimately is what we will be reporting on when we review our estimate report. The way that this works is the assembly allows us to provide a linear footage or to apply a linear footage onto the plan. From that linear footage, these parts take that linear footage, run that linear footage through a formula, which then outputs the quantity of all of these individual parts. The exterior wall is comprised of wall bracing, wall sheathing, top plates, studs, and bottom plates. Now inside of your assemblies, you have these things called um, properties. So these, these properties allow you to adjust your cost, your markup, as well as other properties that are tied into the formulations of the part. So as you're using this for the first time and you're attempting to run a material takeoff, it's important to look at these properties almost as good questions to ask yourself as you're determining the parameters or the specifications of what you need for each of these parts. For example, something like wood framing studs, you may find yourself adjusting the on-center spacing to reflect a more accurate on-center spacing to include things like your corners, your kings, your jacks, your cripples, etc. A lot of framing contractors will go ahead and change that on center spacing from 16 down to 12 or 14 inches on center. Again, the idea is increasing the amount of studs based on additional stud components that are inherently going to be built inside of the wall. Now let's go ahead and continue this and let's apply the assembly. Now notice that this assembly, these parts already have cost and markup stored within them. Your assemblies will not have cost and markup stored within them by default. This is something you will have to edit on your own in the templates library. I'm going to go ahead and apply this assembly. To begin using this assembly, you simply select save and that begins the process. Now, once you select save, it engages this thing called the digitizer. That's just a fancy word for we're just going to begin drawing with this thing. Okay. So, I'm going to measure out all of the exterior walls and I'm going to do it really quick. Now notice my line is staying really straight. What I did was I selected F2 on my keyboard which enables our ortho, that is the hotkey to enable ortho. 
Ortho allows your lines to snap, making it a little bit easier in getting more clean measurements. Now, if you need to break up a linear measurement, you can simply double click to break up a linear, click to pick up again, and then just double click to pause it. So I think of the double click almost like as a pause and play for your assembly measurements. Now we will continue going here and we will finish the entire exterior wall. When we get to the interior walls, we will not do every interior wall, just a handful of them. Perfect. Once you're done with this assembly, you simply select stop and that will end your assembly measurement. Now let's run a couple more assemblies. Let's go ahead and measure out interior walls. To get to our interior walls, we're already in the right place underneath framing. We will just select interior walls. Let's say this plan calls for two by six interior walls. And this also has 10 foot ceilings uniform on the entire plan. I'll go ahead and hit play on that 10 foot two by six interior wall and simply select start. Now from here, we have a series of parts. Again, these parts are relevant to the interior walls. I'm not going to go through these parts as I did with the exterior walls. We're just going to continue this and make these measurements. Notice that these do not have cost in them. What I'm going to do here is just simply select save and I'm going to apply my interior walls. So I will simply left click on all the corners of where I would like to apply my interior walls. So I'm simply left clicking to begin and then double clicking to stop. And again, notice that the double click on this example is super important. Without the double click, it would be really difficult to run this assembly efficiently and quickly. So there are some interior walls. Let's go ahead and stop that. The next example I want to run is subfloor. So let's go ahead and apply the subfloor. I'll simply collapse the interior wall framing starter pack and let's access the floor material. Now we can pick between a 29 ounce adhesive or a 10 ounce adhesive subfloor. I'm going to choose 29 ounce and simply select start. This one is comprised of the actual, the adhesive to stick that onto the joists or whatever it is you're sticking that onto. And then of course the subfloor itself, three quarter inch four by eight tongue and groove. Now we'll just go ahead and select save and we will measure out every location that that subfloor is being applied to. So we're going to do the entire area of this floor plan. The very last assembly I will apply when I'm done with this is a header assembly and we will probably only do a couple of openings, which should give you a decent idea of how you would run your headers. Now we are going to skip the garage for this. We're just gonna measure through the main area, assuming that the garage does not have, uh, of course, subfloor because it'll be a concrete slab. We'll move through here. And to finish this, we will simply double click where we would like to end that area. Now I'll go ahead and select stop. Now the last thing is applying our headers, but you'll notice it's starting to get a little bit packed here and it's getting harder to see the assembly measurements in the plan. What we can do is go back to our pages and we can actually hide the layers to get them out of the way to make it easier to apply new measurements. Once I have hidden these layers, again, all I did was select this little eyeball icon next to that assembly to hide that layer. Now what I'm gonna do is apply my headers. So back to templates. I'm simply going to access underneath framing. I will access the window and door headers, and then I get to pick through either dimensional lumber or engineered lumber, um, which we have LVL pre-built with certain dimension or certain size LVLs. And I can also pick between two or three ply. Let's say these openings are going to be two by eight headers, two ply, two by eight headers standard. So let's go ahead and hit play on that. Now from here, we're just gonna set up some of the information we need. First, we're going to select the number of plies. So we are going to do a two ply header in this example. Now the bearing in inches is the bearing that it needs to over, like it needs to set on the jack studs for that opening. So let's say the bearing in inches on this is going to be three inches on one side. By typing in the bearing in inches of one single side, it will actually double that up for both sides of that opening. 
and it simply is adding those additional inches to the linear measurement you will apply to those openings. Next, we set the pitch, so we're going to set that as 012. That pitch is set up specifically for using this for hip and valleys. Next, we're going to select Start, and that is going to begin the assembly. Now, this assembly is made up of two parts. We have the flitch plate, and we also have the actual header, um, two-ply header. So let's go ahead and apply this. To apply this, we simply just hit Save, and what we will do is we will scroll into some openings here. So let's start with this door. We will left-click to start that, and then we will simply double-click to end it. And notice I'm just going into the opening itself I'm not trying to overlap it based on the bearing. The bearing is calculated on the tool when I typed in that three inches. So I'm just gonna do a couple of these, not too bad. I'll just grab a couple more doors. And you can always run different types of headers depending on the different openings and what your engineered plans call for. Okay, now finally I will select stop and we have successfully run multiple assemblies for a lumber takeoff. We have done our headers, we have done our subfloor, we have done our interior walls, and we have done our exterior walls. Now the final step of running a material takeoff is going to be to review that information in the, your reports to see the breakdown of all those materials. To do that, we're simply going to go up here to our reports tab in the top of the screen and access the estimate report. What happens in the estimate report is that you get to see how the parts are calculating the materials for each one of these assemblies. So let's go ahead and open up all of these assemblies so you can see a nice sample of this information. Okay. Now, starting from the top here, notice that based on 334 linear feet of exterior walls, these are the quantities of each of the parts that we need for that wall based on the parameters we gave it. Same with the interior walls, same for the subfloor, same for the headers. Now the final step here is to actually purchase this material, you may find yourself needing to run an additional report. We have the ability to consolidate the material quantities into a single report that allows you to see all of the materials summed up to their individual part numbers. This is this report we call our bill of material report. This report lives underneath this little drop down in the top right and we will select group by part number. You can also group up your estimate in multiple different ways, not just by part number, but part number has a specific value when it comes to material takeoffs. Let's go ahead and access group by part number. Now notice that every part is consolidating to its given part number. So here in the quantity field, this is the quantity of all of these items, regardless of the assembly they came from, this is showing the, the part quantities across the entire takeoff. Now from here, you can export this to Excel to send it out to a supplier, or you can even use our takeoff to quote feature where you can send this directly to your supplier over email. They can type in the price for these items, and then they can send you that quote back for you to approve and review. That's officially all I have for running a material takeoff inside of Square Takeoff. If you'd like to learn more, please contact our support line as we're always happy to help.